Hello and welcome back to Film Pro Productivity and Success, the podcast that helps film professionals, filmmakers and other creatives to live a more focused, effective and happy life. My name is Carter Ferguson and this is episode 82, Planning Your Best Year Yet, Part 2. Drop the last year into the silent limbo of the past. Let it go, for it was imperfect. And thank God that it can go. Brooks Atkinson, unquote. Okay, so here we are again with part two of this New Year special. And the astute amongst you may have noted that your best year yet smells a little bit like a New Year resolution strategy. Well, I want to say that it is and it isn't. I mean, it is to an extent, but it really isn't. Studies have shown that approximately 80% of New Year's resolutions fail, and I don't engage in making New Year's resolutions because, in my experience as well, they really don't work very well at all. This best year yet strategy is much more, and the odds of success are very greatly improved, even if you have to pivot a little bit along the way. As I mentioned last time, your best year yet is the perfect guide to help you realise goals and overcome last year's limitations and the proven methods laid out within the book will make this new year into your most successful ever. Today I delve again into this incredibly powerful system with the final five questions that need to be answered to enable you to plan out a strategy to correct the failures and missed opportunities that have come before and bring you a new year filled with success and happiness. The knowledge is there within us. We have only to think about the advice we have for others and then have the humility to see if we're following it ourselves. Jenny Ditzler, unquote. The full title of this book, as I mentioned last week, is Your Best Year Yet. Ten questions for making the next 12 months your most successful ever. And the author, Jenny Ditzler, asks ten tough questions for us to answer to have our best year. The first five questions, which I dealt with in the last episode, are as follows. One, what did I accomplish over the past 12 months? Two, what were my biggest disappointments? Three, what did I learn from questions one and two? Four, how do I limit myself and how can I stop? And five, what are my personal values? And today I will be tackling the next five. That's question number six. What roles do I play in life? Father, wife, teacher, student, writer, consultant, and so on. Number seven, which role is my major focus for the next 12 months? Which of the roles listed in question six, that is. Question eight, what are my goals for the next year? Nine, what are my top 10 goals for the next year? And number 10, how can I make sure that I achieve them? And the answers to these questions can be condensed into a one-page plan for the year ahead. And remember that this is also not just a brain exercise. It takes time to sort out and you have to physically write it down on paper or on a whiteboard or whatever way you prefer to work it. And Jenny suggests a single sitting of three hours uninterrupted, but I prefer to tackle it in several sittings over a few days to allow me to consider what I am writing and to help me clarify my thoughts. And the reason I do that, incidentally, is I trained, one of the things I trained in is as a fencing instructor at one point, and I realised that the time away from the the actual learning, the time away from the classroom stuff, the period of reflection, I think it's referred to, was just as important as the time in the classroom itself. So I like to spread, this is such an important exercise, I like to spread it out over a few days and maybe just take an hour or a couple of hours at a time. I don't really take three hours to do this. I take more like five or six, but then I get the best out of it. And after we have answered all of these 10 questions, I'll let you in on the secret of how you can actively make moves to achieve the things that you set out. I went off on a bit of a tangent there talking about how I do it. But yes, we'll get to the point today on 
how you can genuinely achieve the things that you set out to do. I never fit in. I'm a true alternative, and I love being the outcast. That's my role in life, to be an outcast. Meatloaf, unquote. Question six is, what roles do I play in my life? Answering this question will give you an overall view of all the aspects and responsibilities of your life as we all play various roles. For example, you could be mother, wife, daughter, friend, potter, shoulder to cry on, director, editor, artist, dog owner, or as Meatloaf said, they're even an outcast, or you could be a rebel, a spiritual leader, or a teacher, whatever, anything at all, write them down. And you write out this full list of all the roles that you currently play. I find that answering this question can go hand in hand with the values that you've set out in the previous question too. The answers will help to provide direction in the year ahead and place you exactly where you are right now. In spiritual philosophy, awareness, free and independent, is the cause of the attainment of everything and highlighting your roles, just like all the other questions we've asked here, but highlighting your roles helps refine that awareness as making decisions about your life and work can sometimes be confusing. I think we'd all have to admit that. Knowing your roles will also help with motivation and bring balance to your life as they help you to understand your why. In the words of Eric Thomas, when you find your why, you find a way to make it happen. When you answer the question, what roles do I play in life? Add in any new role that you would like to take on in the next year of your life. For example, you might want to become a writer or a screenwriter or become a student of something new. Uh, you might be planning to become a mother or a, a partner of someone, an actor, filmmaker, any of these. They then consolidate your list of all the roles you're doing already in this new one so that you have no more than eight and fewer is fine. You will likely find that you can integrate several of these roles under one title and we'll come back to this in a wee second but when that is done you can move on to question seven which is which role is my major focus for the next year? Now that you know your personal values and how you want them to influence your various roles, you can think about each role in turn and rate your performance in that role on a scale of 1 to 10. For example, you if you've completely sat if you're completely satisfied with your performance, rate yourself a 10. And if you're 50% satisfied, give yourself a 5. And if you're not doing much in that role at all and your performance is abysmal, you probably want to give yourself a 1. Like most of us, I'm used to juggling about 52 roles in life. Wife, mother, sister, friend, author. Sometimes I feel a bit multiple personality. Sophie Kinsella, unquote. And that quote's kind of relevant, which is why I chucked it in here. Because you can take on too much in, in life. But look at the results, then ask yourself the following question. Or the following questions. If I could put one problem behind me once and for all, what would it be? In which role do I want to have a breakthrough? If I were able to put a big tick beside one of my roles at the end of the year, signifying that I felt a sense of mastery in that role, which role would it be? And finally, what's the biggest impediment to my success and happiness right now? And when you've gathered this information, you should be able to decide on your major focus, the one role that you want to really change or expand upon this coming year. Ginny writes, give yourself a chance to win the game you're creating for yourself. When there is one role on which you are focused, you find new levels of persistence and determination. Your true self prevails, unquote. This chapter focuses really on how to choose which role to move forward with and gives guidance to help you to do so. Tony Robbins said, One reason so few of us achieve what we truly want is that we never direct our focus. We never concentrate our power. 
Most people dabble their way through life, never deciding to master anything in particular, unquote. So take the time over the next 12 months to focus on just one role and you will see yourself build momentum in that area very quickly. When you look at it again in 12 months' time, you'll be amazed at the progress that you've made. Question eight, and each of these questions, I I probably should have mentioned this earlier, (laughs) each of these questions has a whole chapter to itself in the book. But question eight is, what are my goals for each role? And you should have a list of eight by now, although we've chosen one to focus on. You've got eight from, I think, question six. So no matter how you define your success, Achievement is simply greater for those with clearly defined goals. That's a fact. And I've delved into this topic several times before in the show. Jenny Ditzler points out in this chapter that people whose goals are aligned with their values achieve more satisfaction and fulfillment. When we've achieved a goal which has been driven by our values, by what we believe in and what's really important to us, we experience an uplift in our lives and a sense of fulfillment in our hearts and minds. All of this makes finding the drive to accomplish these goals all the easier to muster. And this chapter forces you to stop wishing and whinging, it says, about goals by getting specific about them because with strong value-driven goals, you move to a more positive and productive life. Effectively, what you do here is you fill out a form for each of your roles, you write the name of the role at the top of the page and underneath you set out the goals that you'd like to achieve in each role. If you want a full episode on this then go to episode 72, What Are Smart Goals? But keep in mind for now though that powerful goals must be smart, which is specific, measurable, attainable or I honestly kind of prefer action oriented which is uh, exchangeable for the a relevant some people say realistic and time bound as i say there's a whole episode on smart goal setting which you can listen to if you want to know a bit more but that that's what it is specific measurable action oriented relevant and time bound so your goals should also start with a verb For example, spend more time with my children should be rephrased to something like read to my children for at least 30 minutes three times a week. See how specific that is? It's time bound. It's it's very specific on how many times action is going to happen, etc. You could also take um, reduce my stress levels and that could become meditate for at least 15 minutes each morning or edit more stuff could become um, edit for three hours every Thursday morning. You know, you can you can be specific on the goals that you set out um, to achieve. And goals can also be set to be annual or quarterly or monthly. And I'll go into this in a little bit more detail, but goals can be split once again into two categories. Result goals, goals which you're aiming for, and process goals, goals which you engage in which which take you towards your larger result goals a result goal might be write a first draft of a new feature film by the last day of march with process goals being write at least eight pages of my new feature film a week for 12 weeks if it was you know starting at the start of january for example you get very specific on it Write your goals out under the heading of the roles that you play in your life and work. Then match your personal values to your goals. You should also avoid should goals, the word should, as well as want or will goals by crossing them off or rephrasing them. Connect to your real wants and finally take responsibility for them as if you're not willing to do whatever you need to do to achieve a goal you are really never going to achieve it. If you aren't motivated to achieve it, then scratch it. There's probably plenty of goals on your list. Get rid of the ones that you're simply not going to take responsibility for. The people who get on in this world are the people who get up and look for the circumstances they want, and if they can't find them, they make them. George Bernard Shaw, 
unquote. Question number nine is, what are my top 10 goals for the next year? I wouldn't be surprised if you had 20 or 30 or maybe as many as 100 goals written out by now. Question nine forces you to make some tough decisions here, but the process of elimination is an important one. Before you select your 10 most important goals, review your responses to the first seven questions to remind yourself what really matters to you and why. Then review all the goals that you have set for each of your roles and select the 10 which mean the most to you and which will, once achieved, make the most difference to you. Once you've made these choices, check to make sure that you're happy with the balance of your roles and values or the balance of them against your roles and values. Anything left out? Anything getting too much or too little attention? You might want to make some tweaks. When you've got your list of 10, you then want to prioritise it, putting your goals into descending order of priority. If you fail to limit yourself to the 10 and move ahead with 11 or 12, incidentally, or more, then you'll find that you will give up on many of them along the way as there are simply too many to achieve in one year and you will weaken your ability to achieve the ones that really matter. I'm, I'm personally going to try this year to list only eight as my goals. My goals are pretty huge and if I, I think if I want to increase my odds of achieving them, I need to... <laughs> I need to change the odds a little bit. So I'm, I'm going to try and get my list of uh, goals down to just eight this year. It might be possible because I did achieve a couple of big ones uh, uh, this year. So hopefully I can, I can make that work for me. But anyway, once you have decided on your 10, you will find out that you are now in a position to make your plan for the year ahead. And I'll, I've mentioned it before. I'm going to make a downloadable file available to you. It's very simple, uh, but it'll be in the show notes for this episode and the last episode as well and it'll be available only on filmproproductivity.com the show notes that go out on the apps are shortened versions of what is pretty much a full transcript which goes out on filmproproductivity.com so it'll be there but effectively it's just an A4 sheet which is in word format and in PDF format if you'd prefer to print it out and do it by hand and on this single A4 sheet you have or you will have Three guidelines for yourself based on questions one to three. You'll have the new paradigm which you created for yourself in question four, I think it was. Your major focus for a particular role will be, and that's from question six, that will also be written there. And your top ten goals which you've created in question nine. And I also like to write my core values in there too as a reminder. Because as I said to you earlier, the values section, or I think it was the last episode, the values to me are one of the most valuable things that I do here because they just help give guidance to me in the decision-making processes I have as things come up. That written document is important and you can't skip it. The final chapter of the book is dedicated to helping you write out this one-page document, so you just must take it seriously. It gives advice on tackling the questions such as getting the right frame of mind and think of it as time out for yourself. This time you gave up will change your life so it suggests that you enjoy it. It also says prepare your workspace and I personally find that if my desk or my house is a complete mess then my mind is usually a mess too so get yourself into a space where you can not be worried about the mess around about you and you can focus on what you're doing. Next, it advises you to gather your materials. I like to work with a whiteboard and a computer, but you may choose to do all of this by hand. It's completely up to you. Next, it suggests that you decide whether you want to do your best year yet plan on your own or not. Personally, I feel you have to do this on your own, but you might want help. You might want to do it with your partner, for example. Just be certain that you are planning for your year and not someone else's that might be influencing you. I personally feel this has to be you answering it rather than a, a, a kind of group a group chat, as it were, a Zoom call. What should I do in my life? Um, I'd add as well that you should take your time and spend a couple of days working through it if you can. These are difficult questions to answer, so take your time. Covered this earlier. 
I, I feel that doing it over a couple of days is far better for me personally than doing it in one three-hour uninterrupted session, which is what's suggested by Ginny. The problem in my life and other people's lives is not the absence of knowing what to do, but the absence of doing it. Peter Drucker, unquote. Finally, question 10 asks, how can I make sure I achieve my top 10 goals? This question is designed to remind you of what you know to do, just as the Peter Drucker quote says, and this chapter is just full of ideas on how to do it. The first thing it says is that you must keep your best year yet plan in sight, pin it up on a wall and keep those goals in mind all of the time. I print several copies off myself and I have them either fixed to or right next to my whiteboards, which I use every day. And one thing I've noted is if they go below eye level, I can find myself not looking at them for weeks before I catch myself again. So beware of that. I have them, I had them hanging on like magnetic clips on the whiteboard. But what had happened is I'd use the whiteboard and I'd move them out of the way and then they would be out of sight, kind of out of mind. And that would be a problem. Now I sellotape them to the side of the board or to right next to the board so that they're constantly on, on an eye line. Just a top tip there from me. Who I, I like to tell you things that I've learned from my own mistakes, and that's one of them. So uh, it also suggests that you read through your plan every day. Just 10 seconds a day will do in order to keep you in touch with your goals and allow your mind to focus on solutions. And this will help you to take action every day, every week, every month, whatever it takes to move these goals forward. You can ally this with positive thoughts about your success, which will check those self-limiting beliefs that we talked about earlier and check they aren't strangling your potential. If they are, then you must work doubly hard to impose new self-empowering beliefs. You may even find that putting what I'd call a, a visualization of success of that goal alongside it might help. If you're saving for a car or a camera, for example, put a picture of it next to your goal. When you put both in focus, external action and internal focus, the earth moves, says Jenny Ditzler. This chapter gives many examples on what to do to move you forward towards your goals, including what it calls the foolproof solution, which I'll cover perhaps in another episode, and gold time management. Gold time is determined using the Eisenhower matrix. This one appealed to me quite specifically, so I'll cover it a little bit here. And I've covered the Eisenhower matrix already before in the show. That's where you split your activities into important and unimportant, urgent and non-urgent with the aid of a box split four ways. I'll post an image to that in the full show notes on filmproductivity.com as well to demonstrate this as it is relatively simple. With that matrix, you can have activities that are important but not urgent and important and urgent. You can also have tasks that are unimportant that can be urgent or not urgent. So unimportant, urgent, unimportant, non-urgent. Some tasks will naturally move about inside this matrix as time moves on. For example, doing your tax or preparing a call sheet may not be relevant three months before the deadline, but will become very urgent and relevant as the deadline approaches, if you get my drift. The golden time that Jenny Ditzler talks of is your important but non-urgent time. This would be things like working on that screenplay that, that you've been talking about, that I've been talking about writing as well. Time spent on these activities pays off at least tenfold over the time that you invest in other types of activity. That is in moving forward your goals. It pays off at least tenfold. This is why it's called golden time. Gold time is not really about time, though it's about creating balance in your life as it ensures that your personal values and goals are not sacrificed in the pursuit of the urgent short-term must-dos. That's the point here, so don't miss it. For creative people like ourselves, the important non-urgent stuff is the stuff you should never put off. 
If you do, you will reach the end of the year and find that the activities that matter most to you in achieving the goals that you've set out at least were things you never got round to because you prioritised everything else over them. Prioritise these goal-associated activities every day to ensure that they don't fall by the wayside. I'll return to this a little bit later. Jenny explains that the last part of the jigsaw is to ensure that you have good support around about you. If you're intending to get fit, can you find a friend to join you at the gym? Gym buddy. This would be what is known as an accountability partner. If you want to write a novel, will your family be supportive and give you the time and space? If not, could you join a group so that you have positive feedback? David Lloyd George said that anything can be achieved in small deliberate steps, but there are times you need the courage to take a great leap. So to really make your goals happen, you must subdivide them into smaller, bite-sized chunks. This takes a small amount of planning on a regular basis. And I did look at this earlier in an episode, I think it was called How Do You Eat an Elephant? <laughs> but the best way, the, the, the way that the best year yet suggests that you do this is very powerful and it works as follows. Firstly, you have a monthly goal check. So you've, you've already written this out. You've got your document at the start of the year. You've got your 10 goals. You've got your, what else is on it? You've got your three guidelines, your new paradigm, your major focus, and you might have your, your values down there as well. But with that, every month, at the start of every month, you have a monthly goal check. So you take your top 10 goals and divide them up into monthly goals. You could, you could plan it in advance and, 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 and do all 12, but I would recommend that you just take it one at a time. Each month, you need to identify the step that has to be taken to move you closer to your goal. For example, if your goal is get fit and healthy, your January goal might be join a gym and work out three times a week. And you do this for each one of your major goals. At the end of each month, you then review what has happened and figure out what percentage of your goals have been achieved. Then think about what you need to do next month to progress your goal further. Bear in mind too that you might want to focus on one or two goals only from your list and not all 10 at once if they are particularly complex, if you've got some really, really big ones in there. At the same time, you could perhaps achieve a few small parts of all 10 goals each month with a major focus being on just one of them. To help this to happen, you also need to do a weekly goal check once a week. Most people choose late Friday afternoons, Sunday evenings or early Monday mornings to sit down with their monthly goals and identify steps to take over the next week to further those goals. This is a simple process, folks, but this is really, really powerful. This is how, if not doing this is how New Year's resolutions disappear, but these check-ins, this effort you put in every month, every week, and you're going to find out in a second, every day, are what make the difference. So sit down with your monthly goals and identify steps to take over the next week to further those goals. Some weeks, of course, there might be nothing to do as you're working on something else or that you, you've got life interrupting, you can't achieve anything. That, uh, and certainly if you're working full-time in film, that can be a problem. I've had it as a problem before. But during this time, you can also take some time to consider your roles and your values. In your mind, stand in each role one at a time and ask yourself, what is the most important thing I want to accomplish in this role this week? What can I do that will make a difference in this role to the goal that I've set out for myself? Some people refer to this as their weekly gold time session. Manage yourself to complete your weekly gold time tasks above all others prioritise the important, non-urgent stuff, as I said before. Epictetus said, Progress is not achieved by luck or accident, but by working on yourself daily. And this takes me to my next point. By creating a day-by-day to-do list, which you write out the night before, you will allow yourself to further break down your weekly goals. This act will give you both drive and focus on the smaller, more easily achievable building blocks that make up the larger yearly goals. Carry anything not achieved the day before onto the next day or reschedule it if you've taken on too much, which can very, very easily occur, onto the next week. 
I'd add that many important tasks don't necessarily take a lot of time. If one of your roles is as a son or daughter and one of your 10 goals this year is to spend more time engaging with family, then putting call my mum on your daily to-do list will only take a few minutes, but will make a significant difference to your success in that endeavour. And incidentally, I've been doing that for this whiteboard here where I've got notes and I'm crossing them off as I go along, even today as I'm recording this. As Jim Moran famously said, the future belongs to those who prepare for it. That's the point of this whole exercise. So that's it, the 10 questions asked by Ginny Ditzler, and I hope you find the time to get it together and, and do this exercise. It's it's why I've put <laughs> probably possibly too much effort into creating these, these two episodes for you. And of course, she recommended that you, you set aside three hours of undisturbed time to answer the questions. If that works for you, then great. But if you can't block off that much time, then just do the best you can. My preference personally, as I said before, is to do this over two or three sessions split over several days. And that this could simply because I've got a crazy life or because I've found it very difficult to make certain decisions with these big life questions that uh, I'm getting asked. Just take whatever time you need to get this done, but do get it done and make sure you've written it all out as well. This is, I've said this before, it is not an academic exercise. And keep in touch with me to let us know how you are getting on, perhaps on social media or whatever. I'm really, I'm really interested in seeing how you get on with this. I've found it difficult myself, I have to admit, to achieve all 10 goals, but I've certainly made movement on all 10 of my goals in previous years, but I've maybe at best succeeded in completing probably five of the 10 goals that I set out to do, maybe six, but that's still a huge number when you compare it to uh, people who are trying to do this sort of thing without a plan. And as an addendum to this episode, I'm jumping in here with a recording I'm doing on the day of its release because I decided to release it a week earlier than planned. You might have noticed that this is kind of out of sync. This is coming out on the 20th. Uh, yeah, it's the 20th today rather than the 27th. And the reason I've released it a week earlier than I'd planned is to give you a good shout at getting your plan, your strategy, your best year yet plan ready by the start of the new year. So this is, gives you like 10, 11 days to get it together. And I really do want you to do this. I want you to take what I'm giving you here and run with it. I know it's involved and complex and I know it requires a commitment on your part to, to get stuff done, but it is totally worth it, totally 100% worth it, and you really need to give it a go. And while I'm on here, let me just remind you that I'm doing a prize giveaway at the moment. You've got one week left to apply to win one of five copies of Jenny Ditzler's book, Your Best Year Yet, which I have based these two episodes on. I'm buying them out of my own back pocket, my own money. These will be delivered to you via Amazon, so you, you can get them as a Kindle download, if you like, or as a physical copy, providing I can buy them on Amazon, they can be delivered to you by Amazon, you will get your copy. If I physically have to get it to me and send it to Antarctica, because that's where you're based, I'll also do that as well. But uh, all you have to do to enter this is to go to the website, filmproproductivity.com, and put in your email address and subscribe to the website and that, that's because I'm trying to build an email list. I'm finding it difficult to get information across, for example, the fact that I've released this episode a week early to my uh, listeners, to my subscribers. And the second thing that you have to do in order to be eligible for this is to go onto social media and post a, a picture of your phone. It can just a screen grab of your phone or on uh, a desktop picture, photograph, proving that you've subscribed to the show. And loads of people listen to it on the desktop, and it, it surprises me because most of these apps, 99.9% .9 of apps for listening to podcasts, are completely free. There is no downside to having that app. All you need to do is find an app. I use Pocket Casts, but you could also try Radio Public, Player FM, CastBox, Podbean, Stitcher, Laughable, TuneIn Radio, Spotify, Overcast, Castro 3, Listen App, Downcast, Podcruncher, iCatcher, Castaway 2, uh, Apple Podcasts. It's already on your phone. Why aren't you using it? If you've got an Apple phone, that is. Other popular Android ones would be Google Podcasts, Podcast Republic, Podkicker, Podcast Addict, Beyond Pod, Dogcatcher, and Antenna Pod. 
it's free to listen to on any podcast app. So if you listen to it on a desktop at the moment, download an app onto your phone and subscribe there because you'll find it just far more convenient. You can listen to anywhere and you can listen to it while you're driving to work or you're walking the dog or whatever. But that's the two things you have to do, just as a reminder, because I went on a bit there. Go onto the website and hit subscribe. I will know that you're subscribed because your email address will come up when I look into that. And get a screen grab of your subscription to the show on whatever app that you use or on desktop. It can be a photograph and post that to social media with the hashtag film pro competition and ideally putting my social media id onto it as well which is on twitter at film pro prod pod on facebook it's at film pro productivity and on instagram it's just my private account which is at fight underscore director sorry for the big insert there had to do it there's a little bit more interesting stuff coming for the show so i'll let it play on Stephen, I, now I've got this wrong, this name wrong, I think on possibly every other show that I've done. Stephen Covey, I believe is how you pronounce that. That's not Stephen Covey, but Stephen Covey says, to achieve goals you've never achieved before, you need to start doing things you've never done before. And so I present this system to you here as a bit of a gift. If you want to do it seriously, though, I'd suggest you do buy the book or at least try to win a copy. The difference that completing this task will make to your plans and goals and drive to achieve those things that you want to achieve just cannot be understated. So take these questions and run with them. These two New Year specials will help you to answer the questions. So listen again to the shows to help you along and you will succeed in completing this task. Have a great 2021, folks. Have a great year ahead. I won't promise it'll be the best year yet. But if you use this system, your odds will be greatly improved. And remember too, folks, that every year can uh, be your best year yet. So you can go through this process time again and the this isn't your best year ever that you've done here. This is your best year yet. You can reapproach this this these episodes, these questions next year and build a new plan for 2022, 2023, 2031 whenever you're listening to this show. As we close now on this episode and on the dawning of a new year, I have to say a word about Jenny Ditzler. I'd hope that this New Year episode would have been an interview with Ginny and that it would be amazing. I'd been planning it, in fact, since the start of the year. But sadly, Ginny passed away peacefully in hospice at home on May the 15th, 2020, in Denver, Colorado, at the age of 80 years and three months from a rare neuromuscular disease. She wrote Your Best Year Yet While Living in London in 1994. It's been translated into 12 languages and, as we know, it's still in print 26 years later. Based in her book, she and her husband Tim created the Best Year Yet business, which involved executive coaches leading the program she designed for both individual and leadership teams. The Best Year Yet programs are now provided by Interaworks Business. That's www.interaworks.com, which I'll link to in the show notes. Today, over one million people have been impacted by Jenny's book and her ideas for generating a personal transformation. Her personal legacy lives brightly in her four granddaughters and the many thousands of people whose lives have been forever changed by her personal coaching and her book. If you want to know more about Jenny Ditzler, then go to the show notes and follow the links. What I love really the most about Best Year Yet, and that, that I'm really the most passionate about, is the fact that we trust that people already have what they want and need, and all we provide are the tools and the software and the questions and the support and the discipline to help them do what they already want to do, and they do. It's worked time after time for 30 years in 14 countries, And that's what thrills me the most, truly is. Now take control of your own destiny. Keep on shooting and join me next year on Film Pro Productivity and Success. (laughs) 
music that you can hear right now is Adventures by Ihumitsu. You can view the show notes for this episode on the official website at filmproproductivity.com. You can follow my personal accounts on Twitter and Instagram at fight underscore director or follow the show on Twitter at filmproprodpod or on Facebook at filmproproductivity. Check out the Indie Film Hustle podcast network at ifhpodcastnetwork.com and please support the show by subscribing, spreading the word and leaving an awesome review.